today we want to focus on the eight vehicles in front of you. These vehicles, when they're introduced, were not only remarkable in their own time, they're revolutionary. But together, put together, they make up the DNA of the brand. The first vehicle we have is the 1941 Willys MB. Uh, this is the vehicle that started it all. With the war looming, the U.S. Army knew that they needed a vehicle that did not exist at that time. They needed something to replace the Army mule and a motorcycle. Uh, they needed a recon reconnaissance vehicle, uh, a weapons platform, something that could do it all. So the Army drafted some specifications. Among those, an 80-inch wheelbase. Uh, it had to have a folding windshield, and the tires easily removed so it could be created and shipped around the world. Uh, it had to weigh 1,300 pounds or less. Um, that was never met because the Army weren't engineers, so uh, we told them what they needed in the end. Uh, one of the important specifications was it had to do 50 miles an hour. So they sent these specifications out to 135 different manufacturers. Uh, only three responded. Uh, there was a, an eight-month period of testing with those three. Um, it was Ford, Willys, and Willys, uh, Willys Overland, and Bantam. The Army liked certain things from each uh, manufacturer, but what they liked the most was the Willys Go Devil engine. It not only met the 50 mile an hour uh, specification, it exceeded it and would do 65 miles an hour. So Willys Overland was given the contract to build the MB. Over 360,000 of these vehicles were built during the war. Uh, they saw action everywhere and really became the face of America's involvement in the war. Everybody recognized the Willys Jeep. Before the war was over, the Willys engineers recognized that there was applications for this at home, on the home front, a utility vehicle. So they started working on, on adapting it and it became this vehicle, the CJ2A. It was first introduced in 1945 even before the war was over. Uh, Willys was the first manufacturer to be allowed to uh, make vehicles for civilian use. Uh, I'm sure you can see the vehicles are very similar. Uh, the body structure is all the same, same wheelbase, same engine, same drivetrain. There were a few minor adjustments for uh, civilian production. They moved the spare tire to the side to allow for an operating tailgate. Um, they actually moved the gas filler to the side here where the uh, MB you have to lift up the seat to fill the tank. But the most important difference of them all is the fact that this vehicle has flush mounted tail or headlights compared to the sunken ones here. Uh, this vehicle has a nine slotted grill. To uh, make room for these flush mounted headlights, the two outer slots were um, dropped. So this was the first vehicle to carry our iconic seven slot grill. Uh, this was carried on all CJs from 1945 through the Wranglers to the present day. So this is the vehicle um, where that came from. Uh, this is the first civilian Jeep. Uh, Willys Overland was the only manufacturer at that time to offer a light, economical, four-wheel drive vehicle to the general public. Uh, so this is where it started for the civilian market. Our next vehicle is incredibly important to our history. This is a 1949 Willy Wagon. Now there's a couple things uh, that, that are important on this vehicle. Like this one, it was designed during the war. Um, Willys Overland was looking to bring out a utility wagon uh, that would serve many purposes, both carrying passengers and cargo. Uh, the difference on this one initially is that it was the first all steel body wagon ever introduced. Up until that time, manufacturers, because of the stamping process, had to wood frame the entire body and lay metal over it. Willys Overland was the first to introduce the all steel body. The big deal came in 1949 when they added four-wheel drive to this vehicle, hence creating the first SUV. Uh, it was the first vehicle that could carry seven passengers comfortably and carry cargo at the same time. Um, this would be going to be built until 1965 with almost 300,000 examples made. Um, it's so it's really, truly iconic because it is the industry's first SUV. Our next vehicle is 19, this is a 1973 CJ5, um, it came, like the CJ2A, it came directly from a military vehicle, the M38A1, which was created for the Korean War. It was so successful that they just adapted it directly to the civilian market. And you can see how this is much more sculpted, um, it's curved. Um, it's just a more pleasing look to maybe the harsh angles of the original CJs. Um, the, the important part of this vehicle 
it, it became really our first lifestyle vehicle. This is the first Jeep that wasn't a utility vehicle. It wasn't uh, something that was on the farm or doing uh, you know, work as a utility. Uh, this is the vehicle that young people saw in the showrooms, went and bought them, and brought them out to these mountains and these hills. Um, people that wanted to be adventurous, uh, they would go buy the CJ5. Uh, this became our longest running uh, vehicle. The production started in 1955 and lasted until 1983. Uh, this particular one has 6,500 miles on it. Um, it's an incredible survivor, um, and it's a V8. So the V8 was a very limited option, and it was only available from 1972 to 79. So you'll get a chance to drive this one today, and I think it'll probably be your favorite of all. Our next vehicle is a 1983 Cherokee, but the Cherokee was introduced in 1974. Um, the idea of the Cherokee was to move the Wagoneer upmarket a little bit and slot a vehicle in there that um, was something that people moving from the CJs would move up to the Cherokees. Um, now, it's probably somebody that loves the outdoors, uh, loves their camping, uh, but now, maybe now they have a family and they have some kids they want to take with them. Um, they want to throw the canoe on the roof um, and take more camping gear with them, but not give up any of that off-road capability. And the Cherokee did that. Um, it was also available in a couple different packages, most notably the Cherokee Chief, which is a wide body, which gave people a little more aggressive off-road action with that vehicle. Um, so this, again, this is the first time the Cherokee name was used, and as you know, it's been used by pro president in worldwide markets. Uh, the next vehicle <coughs> really revolutionized the SUV. Um, this is the 1984 Cherokee XJ. Uh, Jeep engineers spent four years developing this vehicle, and it really proved that you could build a small, compact SUV and not give up any uh, comfort, any cargo capability, or any off-road capability. It was all there in one package. Uh, a lot of that was because uh, a special unibody frame, where they actually took the frame and wrapped it around the, uh, I'm sorry, took the body and wrapped it around the frame and welded it together. It gave it a very rigid platform. Um, compared to this vehicle, it's 21 inches shorter, six inches narrower, but gave up, or, but retained 90% of the capacity of this vehicle. Uh, this would be going to be built from 1984 to 2001, and almost uh, two million of these vehicles were built. Um, they're still really uh, prized by off-roaders uh, because they can be modified easily. Like I said, it's a rigid platform that works great. Um, it was offered in two different four-wheel drive packages, the Select Track and the world's first uh, shift on the fly system, the Command Track, where a driver could still be moving and shift from uh, two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. So this is the vehicle that introduced that. Uh, our next vehicle is um, the Grand Wagoneer. I'm going to take a step back in 1963 to the introduction of the Wagoneer. Now that was a, a, one of the first vehicles since World War II that Willie's designed from the ground up. Um, and it's significant because it's the first vehicle to combine four-wheel drive and an automatic transmission and also an independent front suspension. So it was really uh, raising the bar on the SUV and creating the first modern SUV. So suddenly um, it was more accessible to everybody. You could have an automatic transmission, uh, you, it's the kind of vehicle you take to the country club or go four wheelers. It, it sort of did them all. So, um, so fast forward a few years to 1984. Um, they introduced the Cherokee and they upscaled the Grand Wagoneer. Now it was a luxury SUV. It came with extra sound insulation, leather interior, AM, FM. It came with all of the options and all of the uh, luxury items that you would expect. Um, especially with the wood grading. Um, it really became a premium SUV at the top of the market. Um, it was the quote-unquote Hollywood vehicle of its day. It's what all the stars and the celebrities wanted to be photographed in, and it really still is. It's uh, very much a collector's item. Um, last vehicle on our Heritage Tour is the 1993 Grand Cherokee. Um, some of you may remember this is the vehicle that broke through the glass at the Detroit Auto Show at Cobo Hall. Um, it really revolutionized the SUV at the time. Um, it created a, a premium SUV class that didn't exist. 
and it became something that everybody else emulated. Um, it had it still had the uh, same unibody as the XJ, uh, but they took it a little step further. It was the first SUV to offer three different four-wheel drive systems. Um, all the interior appointments were premium, uh, and you can see that it still has the basic size and shape of the Cherokee, um, but it, it just went premium. Uh, it's the first Jeep vehicle to have ABS, uh, the first SUV to have uh, airbags. So we, we really raised the bar with this vehicle. Now there's one last vehicle we want to point out to you uh, that is really special in its here. And uh, it was kind of our surprise to us. But the Jeep Jamboree people were kind enough to bring it out. Now the gentleman who just passed away, his name was Mark Smith. He created the Jeep Jamboree. Uh, Mr. Smith began driving Jeeps while in the Marine Corps during World War II, uh, fell in love with them. He's one of the people that really brought the owners together um, in the 1950s to uh, really, you know, get out there, get together, come to Moab, and enjoy their Jeeps together. <clears throat> this particular vehicle is a bone stock, absolutely stock, CJ7 taken from the dealership that Mr. Smith added, obviously, added a few things to, and he drove it from the tip of Argentina to the tip of Alaska. Um, he w went through the Darien Gap in 30 days. Um, it's an incredible achievement. Now he did that not because there's a trophy, not because uh, there's prize money or somebody dared him. He did it because he loved his vehicles and he believed in the Jeep. Uh, he had the passion to get out there and do something people hadn't done before. Um, and you know, we have a saying, uh, we don't build Jeep, you do. This is the vehicle that really represents that. It represents um, people getting out there with passion, with the, you know, the drive, and just getting out there to enjoy their vehicle. And I think no other vehicle that we have can uh, is a better example. So that's the tour. I'm going to turn it over.